It is 8.55 this morning. If you want to get in touch with us, 0879-180-180 is the WhatsApp number. Or, of course, you can always get us at Off The Ball AM. Time for us to turn our attention to rugby. And I'm delighted to say Ronan O'Gara is with us this morning. Ronan, good morning to you. How are you? Hey, Jar, How are you doing? Yeah, good. There's been a... Uh, it's not a controversy, but it's a discussion point this week about Harry Byrne, who isn't getting his game for Leinster at the moment, obviously, uh, but came off the bench for Ireland. And the pecking order has been fairly well established. He's behind his brother for Leinster, but seems to be ahead of him for Ireland. So um, what what do you do in this situation if you're Harry Byrne, if you're advising him? Like, what, what can you do to try and catapult yourself forward to get more game time so you're in the conversation to play more for Ireland? I think there's a few bits to that, Ger. I think the fact was, uh, well, I'm very much on the outside, but reading uh, from afar... I thought he was injured, and if you're injured, you don't present on a Monday available for selection. So in that regard, it's a very different, I suppose, agenda or um, uh, discussion in terms of what's available for the weekend. I think what we're missing completely uh, in the context of this discussion is that uh, uh, Ross Byrne has been very performing for Leinster in a lot of big games and he's uh, he's got the best out of uh, his teammates on big occasions. Um, if I recall, Exeter away, I think in a European Cup game, um, was um, Ross, I suppose, the conductor of, of, of that team. So it's a hugely competitive position, obviously, which, with with Johnny Sexton there, uh, with Ross Byrne there, and with Harry Byrne now looking to uh, make an impact. Uh, I think what has happened, obviously, is that Ireland realised that uh, for World Cup planning in 24 months' time, Harry Byrne looks uh, a juicy option for for, for the Irish team. Uh, for that to happen, his development needs to be accelerated. It will be accelerated uh, at international level but what happens in this position jar is you get better the more minutes you play and the more mistakes you, you make but from a, a Leinster's coaching point of view they are judged in the now and on what happens in the short term so for Leinster develop or for Ireland development it becomes probably a secondary issue they want silverware there was, a, there was a great comment on um, our YouTube channel from a guy called Jim Demp. He says, Harry is 23 soon and only a couple of minutes under his belt this season for Leinster. Marcus Smith is roughly the same age and has played 113 times for his club. I, I checked the ages. Marcus Smith is 22. He'll be 23 on Valentine's Day. And uh, a month later, on April 22nd, two months later, on April 22nd, uh, Harry Byrne will, will turn 23. So there's two months in age difference and Marcus Smith has played all those games. Um, there's, there's obviously different ways for different players. They mature at different stages. But one of the downsides of the Irish situation is that there is a pathway that is very established where you've got to knock off somebody who is a uh, world player of the year if you want to get game time in the big European Cup matches. And... Maybe we need to revisit that as a as a strat as a strategy, like loaning him out for a year. Is that the worst idea? Yeah, well, exactly. But you're coming back to two models that are probably incomparable. The strength of the Irish model is that everything is done towards uh, getting your players performing for Ireland. The strength of the English model is that they have history and pride, and the French model in 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 having a league that they go after hard. Marcus Smith is an old half in one of whatever there is, 14, is there 16 clubs in the Premiership and then there's a Championship and um, you mean, so in that league there's probably opportunity for 50 out halves in Ireland, there's opportunity for max 12 out halves because you have four provinces and four multiplied by three out halves in each, and each province gives you probably a window where you can have probably uh, two probably definite tens in your squad and maybe uh, a, a kind of a, a hybrid 10, 12 that can that can that can play there and that can play in the centre as well. So, uh, you know, I think this is old news in that regard. Or uh, what is uh, becoming more and more um, obvious now is that um, when your path is 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 blocked in one of the provinces, you, you, young professionals coming into the game. Um, they they, they they need to have a look. They need to develop their game. You don't get better by being in the gym. You get better by playing games. Yeah, you can get better by being in a, in a really good environment and learning from other players, but that probably lasts 
maybe 12 months, then you all the stuff that you've learned on the training pitch, uh, you, you, you got to put that into practice in a game situation. So for me, I think uh, there, there is so much in, in what we're discussing that we could take uh, absolute hours upon hours to trash out, but it it's, keeps coming back to a few key points about uh, the strength of the Irish model is you have local players who have immense pride in playing for Munster, Leinster, Ulster and Connacht and that, if you try and dilute that, uh, it really will dilute the provincial game and the provincial game we've seen that, uh, I suppose from an economic, uh, an economic point of view, from a sporting point of view, all the benefits that's brought to the game, to the game in Ireland, but from opportunities to play, they, they are quite limited and the reality is if you're starting out half for for the province, you have a fair chance of being involved in your national team. If you're starting out half for a club team in France or a club team in England, you could be a long, long, long way away from playing playing for your national team. Do we need to revisit the model a little bit though? Like I, 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 I get the strengths and I understand that everybody and the, the game management and all that kind of stuff. But for example, when you guys had those conversations with Jack Crowley, would would it not have benefited Irish rugby for them to say, okay, here's a here's a long term deal for you, Jack, and we're going to loan you out to La Rochelle for a season and see how you get on? Like, do we need to just think a little bit more laterally about certain scenarios and certain positions? Even like, if there are young, tight head props coming up who are never going to play yeah, for Ireland. Yeah, exactly. And sure, I think this is what's great being involved in, in sport and something you, you love doing. I think everyone needs to be managed individually. Can that happen? I think it can because it just needs time. But once you have time and, and you put care and uh, individual programs into people, I think you get a huge response from people or from players, should I say. And I think uh, people who are probably secure and who, who have growth mindset, they, they share ideas and they want to get better and they want to see all their players getting better as well. So I think from for in that re um, regard, uh, discussions should always be ongoing for for what's best for a the, the the player, but also for both teams. There's there's a situation where, uh, you mean in my in my club recently, you you had a, a an international player who was lacking game time, and because uh, it was international window, it was an opportunity for him to play minutes with us. And then he could present himself for for international uh, uh, game. But having played 40 minutes uh, for six weeks and then to go into a test match, I don't think anyone benefits. And that's the individual management of the player and the welfare of the player that needs to be looked after. Because uh, it, it is uh, you're not dealing with um, you're not dealing with robots or objects or, or pieces of meat. These guys have emotions. They're players. They need to be listened to, and we need to map out a really, really good strategy for them to get the best out of them. One of the other things that, that's struck me this week, Ronan, in, in the aftermath of, of last weekend for Harry Byrne is just that there's much more of a microscope on him. There's, there's more criticism out there of, of Harry Byrne. And I guess you would have an insight into that in terms of the early stages of your career. Like, What, what is that like for a young out half realising, OK, right, there's a lot more attention on me and every little mistake that I make is going to be picked up on and commented on? Yeah, it's 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 a great point, and I think it's something that a lot of us uh, retired players forget. the 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 formative years are, are are very difficult because you don't have that bank of confidence. It's easy looking back and saying, "I remember that period," but now young old halves are in that, and uh, I can remember vividly where you know, what I mean, my mood on a Saturday was dependent or on a Sunday was dependent by what the journalists wrote on a Sunday morning about my my uh, performance. And as you get a little bit older and wiser, you understand that the, the time constraints for the journalists to, to perform this, it, it's quite difficult for them in that regard that they're taking a snapshot of the game and they're putting pen to paper or in, in nowadays typing it and, and getting that out to the, to the market uh, on that night. So uh, I think the players are very, very fragile. And I think uh, we all talk about their mental strength, but uh, the impact of the of the social media media has a, has a huge impact on, on players. Obviously, nowadays, I think there's better uh, mechanisms for players to cope with in terms of, I think their support network would be stronger. But uh, 
I still haven't met a player who, who, who likes bad things written about him. No, and the other thing is that there are so few games now, particularly in, uh, in Ireland, where there used to be games that were kind of off-Broadway during the November internationals where players could get form or make mistakes and nobody was, nobody was really watching them that much. But every single match now, the best team tends to get selected more often than not because the, the league season is a bit shorter and everything becomes a referendum. Like every, every time Harry Byrne gets the ball from now on, everybody's like, ooh, if he makes a mistake, well, he can't go in the Ireland team. Or if he does something great, he's like, stick him in, stick him in straight away. And it's going to be the same for Joey Carberry the next time he plays for Munster. There's an uptick in form. We're all very hopeful that things are going to go well for him. But the, the level of pressure ratchets up. They're supposed to be able to deal with that because they're supposed to be our right house in the World Cup quarter final or wherever it is. And that's what we want. But I don't know. It, it feels like um, there's almost too much riding on every single thing at the moment when actually form comes over a three or four month period. Yeah, I peel that back, Jordan. I think that's I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, advise that as a, as a I suppose as a a performance measure for for these guys. I think it depends on what environment you create for them daily. I think if they're feeling pressure about every moment in a game, then they're already broken. It's over for them. I, I would feel to probably counter-attack on your point that every game, yeah, every game is broadcast, but you've got to understand too the amount of players that Leinster use. So it's not always their, their first team, but like they have a strong team uh, week in, week out. But if Harry Byrne or Ka- um, Frawley and these guys want want to play test, test rugby, they, they have to understand that test rugby is going to be another level up. So they, they should be feeling comfortable at this level at this level but I think it would be the wrong mindset to say well if I make a mistake here that could penalise me I think you've got to get to a state where you probably have uh, your objectives um, understood and what you want out of this game before you attack it on a Saturday individually and collectively and then you probably get into uh, a mindset or a state of flow where you get on to an instinctive feel about your game and you go play you you, you kind of there's a, a reason why we repeat things in training to so that you're able to do it when the pressure of the game comes but some, some people actually do it better when 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 uh when they're when they're put into game mode because the adrenaline is there and obviously the I suppose the uh the buzz of the crowd is there and that's what separates people who are able to I to uh, perform under pressure than who aren't. I remember playing with lots of guys in my career who were who were brilliant Monday to Friday, and then Saturday they just couldn't deliver. The point you made there, I suppose, about the environment is is right, isn't it? That if if the coaches and the coaching ticket and the general management are all earning their corn, then that'll remove a little bit of that sense of my whole entire career rests on whether or not I find touch with this well, next exactly, kid. Exactly, Joe. You've got to remember. You, you, you play the game because you love it. You go to Leinster, to La Rochelle every day because it's something you love doing. Um, but if you're thinking of making mistakes, then, wow, that that for me is uh, a warning sign straight away. It's not a job. This guy's a, you're lucky to be involved in playing rugby. You go up there, you, you have to have fun. You have to express yourself. Yeah, there's four points. There's relegation every week. But if you're going to be kind of them, if they're going to be kind of circling around in your in, in your head already you have a negative mindset you can't express yourself it's 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 not that that should never exist in in your in your culture one of the things that Contepomi said this week was that Leinster don't lose a lot of games so that when they do it's a real opportunity to dig down into the analysis and to get into the, to the review pretty deep uh, which maybe if, if you are Harry Byrne and you've made those errors in uh, in a defeat you're kind of bracing yourself for uh, as I say a pretty deep review that could be a little bit scathing I guess Errors are always part of the game on, and especially for a number 10 I think what you find when you're young you make more people ask what experience is experience is when you're in the same situation next week Harry Byrne does not make the exact same mistakes he made seven days ago if that repeats over a cycle of two three years three two three weeks uh, as a coach and as fellow players you begin to go uh, is this guy getting the message or has this guy the capacity to read pictures live in front of him and deal with the scenario I would be uh, pretty surprise from anyone involved in at that level getting opportunities for Leinster that they have consistent errors it just doesn't I, I haven't seen it 
Uh, Ron, I just want to ask you about Shawnee O'Leary, who passed away yesterday. You're just about the right age to remember his last great flush as a the 1984 final when you were about seven, I think. He he is part of that team that ends a famine in Cork terms, uh, what they thought was a famine at that time. Um, and obviously Tomas, his son, would have played a lot of rugby with you as well. So do you have any memories of Shawnee O'Leary? I do. I, uh, yeah, my dad texted me yesterday and it hit me like a ton of bricks. I, I wasn't expecting it at all. I didn't... Uh, I knew he um, was in hospital a lot recently getting dialysis with his kidneys, but... Um, to get the text, it was it was shocking. Obviously, Tomas was very popular in the monster dressing room, and um, we just given him an awful slagging that he was never anywhere near as good as his dad. <laughs> but um, yeah, we all still, you know, I mean, Tomas would have uh, would have been very, very, very proud of his dad, and uh, but he would have been very under the radar as well about Sean showing the images of his dad but uh, he's a legend in Cork very very popular and uh, um, yeah very sad day and I'm thinking of Tomas and his family um, because it's um, really really sad news yeah no very shocking when it came through he's only a young man at 69 as well um, b- before we let you go how, how are things going the the meet and drink of the, the league is back you're preparing for Europe as well um, oh, I presume most of your games are okay in terms of COVID at the moment are they? Well, there's been, um, yeah, we've been, there's a negative storm after coming in on the last 24, 48 hours, a lot of cases, I think. So I think there's a new protocol in the top 14, which we're trying to get our heads around. Masks are back uh, for everybody. Um, and I think testing is back. So uh, very uncertain times, but hopefully Europe um, obviously continues as, as planned. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, a negative wave has has come in, but we concentrate on obviously domestic rugby this weekend away to Stade Francais at nine o five Sunday night, uh, which is an interesting time for a game, and um, then into Europe the following week. So yeah, I, yeah, as you said, um, in my environment, Jared, it's not meat and drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit more at stake. Is it is the five past nine Sunday night? Is that in Paris or at home? In Paris. Right. And uh, what do you do afterwards? Do you stay the night in Paris and come home, or do you get everybody? Yeah. yeah. No. Well, exactly. Yeah. No, we we let them all make their way home to La Rochelle. Do what you want. Boys. <laughs> See you <ya>. Wednesday. <laughs> oh, the flesh pots of Paris won't know what hits them. <laughs> <laughs> What could possibly yeah, go wrong sure for a rugby team? Well, yeah. <laughs> not oh. under, not under my strict management. <laughs> <laughs> no steam being blown off. And one last question: the, the monster scenario. Obviously, there's a potential that they're going to ask for some kind of derogation from the EPRC. Now, it, they might not need to because they, it looks like they might squeak in uh, with enough strength and depth to be able to fulfil the fixture. But Roy O'Connor was making the point yesterday that. Uh, nobody is of a mind to be nice anymore in Europe after all the 28 nils last year and particularly in France if if anybody comes looking to France for hey look we're in a bit of trouble here France will be like well hang on a second look what you did to our lads last year so is that is that true is there generally a look after yourselves here from this point on oh yeah it's ruthless beyond ruthless George. just I think um, I saw I suppose sport differently i think was it when uh the the hand of god of thierry Henry wasn't it the goal yeah and ireland applied to be the was it the 33rd team or the 30 was yeah the, the 30, in in the 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 absolute joy and laughter the french took out of that um it's just like who are these guys <laughs> how can that happen you know there's just the result of the soccer game that was it it's over and they were kind of look at this small nation what are they trying to do change the rules to be added in because of someone doing something uh, unsporting in a game for them it's par for the course it's just there they get on with it over here it's everyone for himself you know you gotta you gotta make sure that you cannot ever count on a goodwill gesture that's for certain uh, but Henri sat on the grass beside Richard Dunn afterwards and says, I'm very sorry. So that makes up for it, right? <laughs> well, well, sure, exactly. Sure, in rugby, sure. Neil back as well. It's like if he's playing for you, it's brilliant, you know? That's that's what happens, you know? I think these things, you've got to 
you got to you got to live with them, you know. It's the same in the European Cup final. We in our game against Toulouse, you kind of have a guy poaching the ball nine times out of ten. It's a penalty, but what are you going to do? Start, sit there, and start crying, and write a letter to the European rugby that we were really hard done by there. <laughs> it's just. Can we have a cup as well? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have one. We would have won it if we got the penalty. <laughs> So. Do, do, do you like have like a, a mechanism in your, in your head at that moment Ronan that it's like the wheel will always turn or anything like that or is it, are you as cold and calculated as you are now even in the heat of the moment it's a great question uh, you'd like to think there's karma but I'm not too sure Ronan good stuff enjoy wherever Paris takes you on Sunday night I'll enjoy the meat and drink of the top 14 <laughs> see you later good luck <laughs> Ron McGarr on a Thursday morning there. Uh, that was pretty interesting. They're ruthless. Yeah, they are. You gotta be. If you if you don't eat, you're gonna get eaten. <laughs>